What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from the customer. All right, this story's called, I just wanted some freaking chips, so I'm miserable. I hurt, I ache, and just feel like a disgusting swollen lump and decided to just say screw it. I'd like to think everyone has had those days from time to time. I just wanted some comfort food so that I could hide away in a dark little corner within the depths of my room and just pretend not to exist for a few days. I deserve that every once in a blue moon after all. Unfortunately, in order to procure said comfort foods, I had to venture out into the world of daylight and fight plague-denying idiots by the colossal hordes. Oh, joy. So, off to the land of blue-vested employees and idiots I go. The staff may not always be great, but it's the other customers that you really have to watch out for. Yeah. Surprisingly, once I get there, it's actually not that bad. Slightly crowded, but everyone is actually behaving, waiting their turns, and practicing great social distancing. Yay! I only had to give a dirty, scolding look to one chin cover wearer and make a simple hand motion for them to pull it up and rush off. This might not actually be a bad trip for once. <laughs> Wrong. Love make was I stupidly optimistic. Granted, my hunt around the aisles was actually pleasant and uneventful, but checking out, on the other hand, was a freaking nightmare. Why? you might ask? Well, if you read the title, you can sort of guess, or at least I hope you can. You see, I just wanted a simple bag of crispy chili and cheese flavored corn chips. I only eat these things maybe once every year or two. They're purely an indulgence. Knowing the demon spawn back home would want their fair share though, I grabbed the largest bag they offer in the chip aisle. You know, the same aisle that holds all of the other chips that any customer can grab and buy, right? Well, as I'm doing self-checkout, I go to scan that precious bag of chips, and the machine freezes. Item not recognized. Please wait for assistance. What? Scan again. Same message. Weird, but whatever. I set it aside and continue with the rest of my shopping. I finished but had to wait a few minutes afterwards for the assistant overseeing the area to come over and help me. We'll call her, uh, Barbara, because I don't particularly like her since she always has the, the complainy, rude, everyone is a thief attitude. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. Oh, you're trying to scan that? Well, sorry, you can't have that. It's for staff only. Uncomfortable yet polite laughter because I genuinely thought it was a joke. <laughs> That's all right. I just had some trouble scanning it. Barbara walked away halfway through my sentence with my bag and just left me hanging. I waited for a moment, saw her place it behind the station counter with another assistant, and leave to help someone else. I then approached the other assistant, asking if she could please help me ring up my chips that the other lady had just placed down and pointed to my till. She just looked at me for a second and then nervously promised to be right over. Great, so I walked back to wait patiently. Less than a minute later, Barbara walks over with two security guards. I'm gonna have to ask you to pay and leave. What did I do? You were cut trying to steal a product not in our system and specifically earmarked for our other employee. See? She shows me the package. These aren't even labeled to be sold at our store, but a competitor several blocks away. Uh, then why do you have 40 other bags placed on the shelves in the chip aisle for anyone to grab and buy? I know for a fact that we don't and that these were a special purchase for employees only to enjoy on their break. Now I'm gonna have to ask you. Putting my hair up in her face before declaring in a firm, stern tone looking towards the security guards. No, you have cameras everywhere. 
go back and check the footage and have another employee check the chip aisle for the same product. Security guards mumbling to themselves call other members over the radio to relay the message. Barbara keeps trying to speak, but I just shush her like a boss because I am done with her beaver sausage and am seeing red. A few minutes later, we hear something, something confirmed. It checks out over the radio, which was quickly turned down. Security guard gives me a quick apology before turning back to handle more important matters. Barbara and I are left there to glare at each other. If I was, in fact, stupid enough to steal something, why the heck would I be trying to buy it in the first place? Well, the code isn't in our system, so I can't let you buy it. So, in other words, you're too damn lazy to go find a manager to help you, and instead thought it would be amusing to put me on the spot thinking that you would win? Barbara turned around and stormed off before I could say another word. But then another assistant came up behind me with a peace offering. I know it's not the same thing, but if you have any cheese at home, heat up this chili and dip the normal flavor ones in it. It's kind of close enough. Here, I even discounted it for you. She then presented me with a can of decent chili and a large bag of the same chips in the original plain flavor. I was fuming! But that kind gesture took the wind out of my sails and I graciously accepted, before finally paying and leaving. Sure, I could have made a scene or maybe been an ass about it and demanded more, but I just wanted to get home and be done with the whole thing. And sure, I paid a few dollars more, but I didn't have to run back and grab those substitutions myself. Besides, that incident definitely got recorded, so if that bimbo ever tries to start something with me again, I can use it as a reference point for complaint in the future. All around, I see this as a win. Quick note, I'm not 100% sure if the security uses actual radios or walkie-talkie type devices, but they go beep and have the auditable static if that helps any? I don't know, so don't grill me over that description, please. I did the best that I could there. It's okay. I mean, I'm a stickler for these things, but I'll let you slide, buddy. Yeah, I can see that being really annoying because I'm pretty sure with most point-of-sale systems, you can add items that aren't in the system. It's not that hard it takes like a minute um so yeah that lady was just ridiculously lazy and she does not deserve that job what the hell all right this story's called delivery driver takes a bite out of pizza so the story begins one night my twin brother and i were very hungry and decided to order from an unnamed national pizza chain that prides themselves on fast delivery so i order the pizza it was one cheese and one pepperoni this unnamed pizza location is also within one and a half miles of my house so you would think it would be quick, right? Heck no. At first, we waited around an hour, and the app has a tracker so you can see what step in the pizza making process they are currently at. The pizza making process had been done for quite some time, around 30 minutes, but had not been given being delivered signal yet. Instead of anxiously waiting on the pizza, I did what every normal person would do and call. Hello, uh, this is OP, and I ordered a pizza around an hour ago. It says the pizza has been done for 30 minutes. Do you know how, uh, when it should be coming? No worries. Let me check for you. Um, yeah, uh, your order is going to be next out for delivery. I'm sorry. We are short on staff tonight. No worries, man. Uh, would you mind making sure the pizzas aren't cold? I just don't want pizza that's been sitting for an hour and room temperature. As long as they aren't cold, I won't care. Yes, I understand. We will make sure they're hot. Honestly, the cashier was nice, and I thought, all right, so I'm about to get my pizza. About another 20 to 30 minutes go by, and still being calm and collected, the driver finally arrives. He called me 
when he arrived and I met him right outside my house. This is when things got weird. Something to note is the driver was about 20 and he clearly was having a rough day. Busy night for you guys tonight? Yeah, I'm the only driver on tonight and we are freaking slammed. Sorry about the wait. I get it, man. I work in the food and beverage industry too and it sucks sometimes. Basically just telling the guy I feel him. Yeah, if my manager had any idea what he was doing, this wouldn't be happening. He sucks and I'm tired of this crap. This little encounter went on for about two minutes back and forth. I honestly felt bad for the guy, so I gave him a $10 tip on a $19 order. I did think the conversation was awkward, but I was hoping to get some good karma. I proceeded to go inside and could already feel the pizza boxes were not hot and probably had been sitting there for about an hour and a half. I proceeded to say in my head, screw it, I'm about to eat this pizza even if it's cold. I'm a college student and I've probably eaten six hour old pizza before, how bad could it be? So I sent the two pizza boxes down at the dinner table for me and my brother to eat. We opened the first box and were shocked by our discovery. Someone had taken three pieces of pizza and had taken a huge bite and then proceeded to put the pizza back together. Me and my brother were laughing so hard. This whole time, all we wanted was two pizzas, and what we got was a delivery driver who wanted to lose his job. You know the laugh when you're kind of in shock and upset, but can't help but bust out laughing. Admittedly something I shouldn't have been laughing at. Me and my brother decided to throw the second one in the oven to heat it up, which was unsullied from the eye's perspective and take our chances. Though this was a terrible mistake, I could only make it through one bite and the pizza was honestly horrible and the whole experience turned me off. Me and my brother both agreed the second pizza was probably tinkered with in some way, much sicker than just an innocent big bite, but that is not confirmed, though we do have some conspiracies. Writing this post, I did realize I did the opposite of what any sane person would do. I decided to not call the company, though I realized this would probably get me tons of free pizza. I never wanted to eat there again, and I'd rather just eat the 29 bucks that I had already paid for the pizza and not have to explain this story over the phone. Probably to the manager that he had just said sucks as he was arriving back to the store. I just was not in the mood to deal with it. My other thinking behind it was, maybe the pizza delivery driver will have to suffer one more day if I don't call. He wanted to get fired, obviously, and this was his going out. I just didn't want to give him what he wanted. Another conspiracy was, what if it wasn't the delivery driver? I'm going to leave this post as this. I hope you guys enjoy. By the way, this happened a year ago. In case you wanted to know, the delivery driver, or whoever did it, preferred pepperoni pizza over cheese. Okay, see, that... That's messed up, man. I've had so many, like, bad food delivery experiences because people suck. People suck. Like, th there's times where, like, I waited, like, two hours for food that was way overpriced and it got there cold and just not very good. And I guess it's my fault for ordering delivery, but come on. If you're paying for something, you can expect it to work. All right, this story's called A Karen Gets Anal About Policies and Guts My New Friend Right in Front of Everyone. So this happened at my local Stuff Your Own Animal. My oh-so-loving boyfriend decided to surprise me for Christmas with an out-of-stock one I had missed. A beautiful, chonky Snorlax. Funds were particularly tight the date it was released, and by the time I got my new job, they were all gone. He even managed to get it to me unstuffed, so I got the experience myself. Which after this whole harrowing ordeal, I have learned is a huge no-no. I made sure to ask in advance, and ask three employees on my way in if it was alright for me to get him stuffed there. Sure, no problem, they all assured me. I wait an hour in line, making small talk with a few employees in the meantime. I was just so happy this was finally happening. The 
weekend before Christmas. Now, for anyone who doesn't know about these types of stores, the stuffing ritual is a whole process. There's a quaint magic to the procedure. You step on the petal to fluff them full of life, you make a wish, kiss its heart, and it's all really to make the kids who go there feel extra special. But even as an adult, I still take it seriously. I adore the ritual, and stuffing my friend is a very special thing to me. Oh boy, the phrasing there. So here I am foot on the pedal, talking with the lovely young gentleman stuffing my bear. My chonky boy was near entirely stuffed and I stared at him with anticipation and stars in my eyes. I was about ready to take him from the guy and give him a big hug to gauge his firmness when our Karen came along. Sorry, we can't stuff Pokemon here. Oh, really? My bad. You'd think it would end there. What's done is done. We, and the entirety of her staff it would seem, had no idea this obscure policy existed. But no, she wasn't satisfied letting it be. I honestly barely remember the details of the conversation because I just entirely blanked. I know she made some accusations and demanded a receipt, which we didn't have on hand as it was a gift from a family member out of state. She proceeded to rip him off of the stuffer and continuously chastise us. She begins to tear into his body, grabbing handfuls of stuffing and just tossing it aside. Because we really just can't stuff them here. Try going to a local craft store. You'd really have to understand the magic of the stuffing process to know why this was so devastating to witness. She did this in front of all the happy families there for Christmas. I was standing there just shaking and focusing on not breaking down in front of everyone. Not only was the illusion of magic ruined, not only was my friend just being manhandled, but my favorite store was straight up accusing me of theft. I eventually begged her to just let us leave. After standing there having a mild anxiety attack for well over five minutes, but she really wouldn't even let us leave until she had scraped every last bit of fluff from the inside. We came back later after I had spent an hour in the food court crying on and off into my uneaten blizzard while my boyfriend furiously texted his aunt for the receipt. Of course, even after giving her the receipt, she held her ground. She point blank refused to accept our receipt as the store it came from had a problem with theft. As if we just bought one from that store and decide to use that receipt to funnel a chain of stolen Snorlax? Who knows what she was thinking. I couldn't even deal with it for the most part. I kind of wandered in and out and kept excusing myself to go to the bathroom to cry some more while my boyfriend tried to handle the Karen. It was, quite honestly, the worst retail experience I have and probably will ever have. Even now, I'm not entirely sure if she did that to us because of their policy or because she just mentally decided we had stolen it. Because I have since spoken to multiple people in this chain at all levels of management and they all are in unanimous agreement that as long as you are polite, they absolutely bend any of those policies for you. It's not life or death, it's a stupid fun store for kids and children at heart. And to rip the stuffing out of a stuffed bear against the customer's wishes? That's just all kinds of messed up and no one could believe it. Honestly, to the right set of eyes, that could have been a traumatizing experience because goodness gracious, that was just overkill and unnecessary. Wow. Also, hooray on thoughtful gifts because well, that's what makes gifts great. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.